Keep Right with Ralph K. Genorio, an elegant simplicity. Humanity is full of predators, eager to victimize their fellow human beings. Such a potential for evil and madness exists in all of us that the first duty of every culture and civilization is to establish some form of law and order under which civilian life can flourish. If a society does not protect people from all enemies, foreign and domestic, then it loses legitimacy. It becomes worse than, u- than useless. Societies that fail in this essential duty deserve to fall. Most quickly do. Healthy and successful societies also provide positive inspirations to all members in addition to law and order. Faith offers reasons to hope in a world where every single one of us is mortal and where every work we produce will someday turn to dust. Shared core beliefs explain why life is worth living. Religion and philosophy also warn against those things that are worse than death. Traditions exist in every global society that that constrain the beasts within each one of us by reason or by force. Families teach how a boy or a girl can become a good man or a good woman. Faith and families together also teach us right from wrong, good from evil, sanity from insanity. If faith and family fails, then schools try to help students learn how they should behave as well as what they will not be allowed to do. If schools fail along with faith and family, it is only for the police, law courts, and prisons to try one last time to inculcate civilization in the savage heart. Failing this, all systems of law default to protecting the rest of us from these evildoers. Every human being is born a savage. We each must be taught civilization. We must learn everything about the manners that allow us to function together and the morals that inspire us. Some of us never learn. This is a tragic reality. Not everyone learns right from wrong, and many who do reject the very concept of limits on their appetites or behaviors. This is why, for example, all postmodernism is suffused with an ethos that encourages child molestation, bestiality, and every other deviation from heterosexual monogamy be clear, I'm not equating consensual homosexuality among adults with bestiality or pederasty. Postmodernists do, however, however. They abhor all received traditions about masculinity, femininity, parenting, decency, identity, and virtue as being mere social constructs. To these free thinkers, all traditions from every culture, Western or otherwise, is a mere superstition that must be rejected and abandoned. Because of this assertion, that all traditions are lies intended to trap free souls in a prison of conformity, some of our most elite, best and brightest luminaries advocate the abandonment of even the concept of shared values, traditional morality, common decency, law and order, and even objective reality. Postmodernism, which is communism by any other name, is utterly hostile to peaceful civilian life in advocating the deconstruction of all elements of every cultural heritage worldwide. They hope to build a new utopia for themselves of unlimited freedom from shame and constraint. Such a roiling anarchy allows the powerful to own the powerless, exploiting other people to serve either the elite's revolutionary ideals or their momentary whims. To these breathtakingly arrogant people, there is no compelling reason not to consume human flesh, have sexual relations with minors, or enslave anyone who dissents. 
They wish to do more than play God. They wish to be gods, judging all others, yet being above any judgment themselves. And if those outside of their select elite can be made even more dependent upon their cashless banking, tenuous supply chains, and centrally controlled electrical power grids, they might succeed. Such cliques now rule the People's Republic of China, North Korea, Zimbabwe, and every other totalitarian police state. With artificial intelligence and an ever less civically educated citizenry, such groups could establish themselves here. At the street level, such ambitions have shaped and are shaping a very different reality for the rest of us who are not ourselves elite. The racist lawlessness that is devouring civilian life in the Republic of South Africa is a foretaste of what is being attempted in the cities of Europe and the United States. Imagine living without any rights to your own property, subject to an unchecked criminality where mobs of thugs can raid your home or business at any time. Imagine living where everything must be fortified, where every home must be protected by tall walls and razor wire. Imagine plundered hospitals, a broken power grid, and a life where every journey outside a fortress home could be your last because kidnappers, rapists, and murderers no longer fear the police. This is now what everyday life has become in South Africa in the decade since the death of President Nelson Mandela. This anarchy has been life in Zimbabwe for the past 35 years. Such lawlessness is becoming normalized in the suburbs of Paris, in Londonistan, and in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Portland, and Seattle, just to name a few. Throughout the Western world, Anyone who steps up and demands a return to law and order is called a white supremacist, a racist. A racist? Really? As if only Europeans created lawful societies that protected the weak from the strong and the unscrupulous. Only a genuine ra racist would assume that the proportion of melanin in one's skin has anything to do with one's capacity to behave lawfully. Only the racism of the left implies that seething anarchy is the natural state of all humanity whose ancestors originate from beyond Europe. For us, the antidote to such madness is a colorblind meritocracy rooted in the liberty-oriented values of the Judeo-Christian West. We must reject the untrammeled delusional psychosis that is postmodernism in all of its forms, as well as the notion that lawlessness is somehow normal or socially just. Everyone who is not a predator benefits from law and order in a colorblind meritocracy rooted in the traditions that celebrate human dignity and promote liberty. This is the answer, an elegant simplicity of fair constitutional laws enforced impartially for the good of all. We once had this. At least we once were building such a more perfect union. We should reject utopianism and the racism of low expectations and rededicate ourselves to pursuing this worthwhile ideal.